Tidak ada sekalian yang lain sudah hadir belum? Oke, okay. ya, baiklah hari ini kita akan uh, mendengarkan sharing from uh, Pak Hazani. Hazani to sharing about the Saudi culture and maybe Thursday he will come again to a sharing about the Saudi culture. Uh, I hope uh, my my student can uh, understand and they are can uh, more uh, learn about the Saudi culture from the another country in the University Putra Malaysia. Maybe uh, it's same with Indonesia about the Saudi culture. Maybe it's different. Is now we can start uh, to sharing from the uh, Pak Azani. Uh, Pak Azani, time, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so it's a very uh, for me it's very I'm very happy today in this uh, early morning invited to be a, a lecturer at your fa uh, faculty. Yes, lecturer. Yes. Guest lecturer. So, so today I would like to share with all of you is about the Malaysian uh, civic culture system. And we have known that this uh, civic culture system actually has been start with, uh, since uh, early uh, 19. Let's share first. Okay, so I think, okay, that is uh, maybe I will give the lecture in English and also in Malay mixed together for easy to understand about the, uh, the, the topic that I'm going to talk. Uh, it takes about 72 slides. I hope it can be done within two hours. Um, so let's start. Okay, we start with the history of Malaysia Superculture System. This is uh, the, I would like to say is the like uh, synopsis eh, for today. Eh? Uh, so actually the, the earliest record that uh, the history of the forest management system in Malaysia is start with the Gutta Percha uh, era, which have been studied in 1901 uh, until 1910. And uh, the Gutta Percha actually is come from the latex of few species, palatium species, okay? palatium species. And at that time, in 1901, there's no technique how to uh, pick the latex, eh? like what we have done to the rubber tree right now. Eh? Rubber tree, we have the, the methods to, to get the, the latex. But before that, they don't have any methods, the, the, the best uh, methods to get the latex. So what they do, they, use, they just use a parang, eh, machet, and uh, make uh, some uh, how to say the injured the tree and then waiting for the uh, latex and then they put something uh, to collect the latex. Then uh, that's in the Gutta Percha era in 1991, 1901 until 1910. And then uh, at the same time, uh, 1990, starting in 1910, uh, not only having the Gutta Percha or the latex of the, the Palakrim Gutta, but they, they also start cutting some trees, start cutting some tree, mostly the very uh, expensive, or we can say high value uh, trees. At that time we have New Balano Kapas Hemai, or in Malay, we call Chenga, and, uh, or, and another species, uh, some of the Balao species or Shoria species. So at that time they use this uh, New Balano uh, Kapas Hemai and also the Shoria species for the uh, railway eh? for for the uh, railway the train eh? and then in and then the and since then it start to have the uh, civic culture activities eh? mostly they are focused more to the guta pocha and also the replanting of the uh, uh, the chengal new balona kapas and also a few uh, species uh, of uh, balau shoria and also in 1920 something, we already start uh, do the planting of uh, getah, eh? 
heavier resiliency eh, in early 1920 something eh. and then start in 1911 until 1922 uh, the civil treatment we which have been known as the improvement failing have been introduced and been uh, focused to the uh, the management of the palakim guta and also some of the uh, important species like what I said is neobalanocarpus and also some shorter species. Uh, so at the time we have lots of uh, methods. Actually, we, I do not say method. It's like a treatment, eh? a supercultural treatment. Uh, mostly, it's not a good treatment eh, in early nineteen. Uh, 11 until 1922 because they do the improvement failing improvement failing that means they cut some of the tree to open the forest the canopy uh, to get more sunlight to the forest floor to make sure the ceiling or the sapling get enough sunlight so the tree can grow eh? so what they do is they cut some of the big tree at that time in 1911 or 1922 some of the big tree we can say it's not marketable yet or not commercial. Eh? But right now, all of the three are commercial. Eh? And then go to 1922 until 1942, there were few uh, uh, methods, uh, the treatments or civic treatment have been improved. We have department improvement failing, we have commercial regeneration failing, regeneration improvement failing. So all of this, we are going to talk after this. In 1942 until 1945, there's the occupation of the Japanese there. So there's no logging, there's no the forest management system are stopped, totally stopped, we can say. It. But in 1945 award, we have our own uh, Malayan uniform, uh, uniform system. Eh? Malayan uniform system, or we can call it as MUS. And then improve. And uh, MUS has been improved in uh, 1978, actually. In early 1970, the Malayan uniform system, we already going to improve it. In early 1970, we're going to improve. So we have lots of uh, uh, work have been done, especially uh, we take care about the, the treatment, eh? the subculture treatment that we have done. In Malayan uniform system, we improve, and then we have uh, introduced a new selective management uh, system, or we can call it SMS. So until now, we are still using the SMS, but with some modification. Okay. So it start in 1978, selective management system have been introduced in Malaysia. Since then, we have lots of improvement have been done to the selective management system. Okay, so this is the classification of uh, Malaysian agriculture system. Uh, mostly uh, the, the forest maybe some of you understand what is the high forest system high forest system is mean that the forests are originated from the seed or sapling not from the uh copy seed so this is high forest system is come from either seed or uh, seedling eh? not from the copy seed so in malaysia or in indonesia mostly our forest is uh, uh, high forest system so in our high forest system mostly uh, we can divide into two, either we can have even age and also uneven age. So when we have uneven age, there will be a few strata of a layer of vegetation and even age, we can see maybe one or two uh, layer of uh, vegetation in our forest. So in even age uh, forest, we can divide the, the system that have been applied, the civic uh, treatment, we can we can say that we have shelter wood system, okay, shelter wood system, and another one is uh, MRIS, eh? MRIS. Okay, then we have MUS. MUS is Malayan Uniform System, and then for the uneven age, that's why come our selective management system, eh? selective management management system with some selection have been done. Eh? Okay, this is the in general we say that our forests either in Malaysia or in Indonesia, our forests come from high forest uh, system. Uh, if, if you go more detail, we have even age and also uneven age. Mostly are uneven age uh, forests right now that we can divide the treatment, chateau wood, MRIS, MUS, 
selection and also SMS. Okay. All right. Next, need for new classification scheme. Why? Okay. All classification system has to be changed. Okay. Has to be changed. Why? Because of, for example, uh, in 1990, in 1922 until 1942, we have few uh, treatment have we done, eh? according to the felling of the trees, eh? felling of the tree. Uh, for example, the departmental uh, improvement felling, we have also the commercial regeneration felling, regeneration improvement felling, all of these are for what? To get more sunlight, uh reach to the forest floor so we can have our forest more better eh? okay even age forest not necessarily even size and one story okay even is forest not necessary even size and one story that means some of the tree we have few layers and eh? not only one layer not only one story but few layers eh? kalau di malaysia we Kami panggil silara, ya yeah, silara atas dan juga di bawah, ya. Yeah. Okay, and then classical clear cutting technique is non-existent. Yeah. In our forest, we didn't apply clear cutting. If you apply clear cutting, that means you cut all of the tree, and then you bring back nothing there, barren area, and then you do the plantation everything. Yeah. Then we have advanced regeneration. Eh, advanced regeneration plays major rules. Eh? Okay. So this is back the classification that we have, even age and also. Eh? Okay. One more time, sorry. So this is review that we have talked, eh? we have discussed, we have Guta Pocha, we have MRIS, we have MUS and also SMS. So this is the, the, the changes that we're going to do. Eh? So in history, uh, we don't have copies. Eh? We don't have copies, we have uh, the high forest uh, system. Okay, Clear cutting, we didn't apply. Seed tree, yes, we don't have, but we have shelter wood. Yeah, shelter wood uh, under this uh, Malaya regeneration improvement system, or sometimes they call Malayan regeneration improvement system, FMUS, and also SMS. So, this is uh, uh, to show you uh, regeneration before disturbance and also after disturbance. Okay, we go to the Malayan regeneration improvement system. Everybody okay with my lecture? Any comment or any question to ask? Okay. Is lanjut, that... lanjut next. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we go to the Malayan Regeneration Improvement System. Still go to this uh, tropical shelter wood. Eh? We have tropical shelter wood. What is shelter wood? Shelter wood, that mean we cut the tree and then we leave some of the tree to give a shelter to the young seedling or sapling. Okay, so until the seedling or sapling be uh, going to be uh, better, grow enough sunlight, everything. So at the time, they are, we can it's not matured yet, but uh, capable to have more sunlight. So we cut that shelter wood. As we cut that shelter wood, that means we uh, increase the sunlight penetration to the forest floor. Okay, so repetitive canopy opening, eh? the tropical shelter wood system, regenerative uh, system, is a repetitive canopy opening. That means they cut many times, not only one time. Eh? So the first cut or preparatory cut is for opening. Eh? Opening, opening the area to get more sunlight and also to reduce the competition. Eh? Competition between them, between the ceiling, sapling, everything. So encourage enlargement of crown, okay, which conducive for seed production, cut mostly lower crown cluster. So the below tree, they cut down. Okay. And then we have the second cut, 
this is the establishment card carry out during a year that means after one year after the first card eh, which the desirable species bear seed in abandon after the seed have matured and before they germinate and then they will go to the third card removal card once regeneration is established the seed, the seed already germinate everything and then become bigger okay healthy everything so we can say establish stocking is acceptable enough and then shelter is no longer required at that time we cut that shelter wood sometimes that shelter wood we say a mother tree yeah we cut the mother tree and then leave all their uh offspring eh? okay okay then the origination is less than uh 10 years yeah less than 10 years we have the advanced regeneration in mris eh? so this is and then we can say we have the even age so the definition of even age is different with uh, uneven age eh? yeah even age not only one layer but sometimes they have two layer but between two layer between one layer and one layer the age is not more than 20 percent in terms of the rotation so that's uh, i can explain that later on eh? okay so this is the schedule operation under the uh, Malayan regeneration equipment system okay so under mris we have two system uh, two uh, treatment one we call the commercial regeneration failing okay commercial regeneration failing another one is the regener regeneration improvement uh, failing so we have two uh, two uh, treatment eh? but all is related with the failing or opening of the uh, area eh? forest gap okay we go to the commercial regeneration failing eh? to compare with regeneration improvement failing so before final failing eh, before final failing either one year or two year the pool failing and eh, we do the pool failing of class two pools eh? class two pools is mean the tree is not uh commercial okay at that time eh, it's not commercial that is back in 19 uh night that one is uh back in 1922 until 1942 yeah, so some of the species that under class two pools at that time it's not commercial but right now it's valuable eh? okay so pool failing we go to this is the pool failing Okay, pool failing of unmarked class two species. So this is class two species. Eh? This is class two species. This is class one species. Uh, valuable tree, expensive tree compared with C2 is maybe we can say uh, cheaper tree eh? compared with the uh, C1. Okay, so what we do is we pool failing. Pool failing is going to be cut. Okay, main objective. To harvest the timber that might be destroyed during final felling. If you want to cut this as a final felling, C1 as a final felling, when it's dropped, maybe destroy this C2. So, what they do, we do is we cut this one first, okay? Before we go to the final felling, so we do the cutting of uh, pool felling. That means cutting of the C2. Yeah? Okay, then, sorry. And then we have seedling failing. Eh? Okay, seedling failing. First, we mark the seedling failing, seeding failing of class two pools. Okay, so this is the one. Harvesting of some marked class two species. This is class two. Eh? Can canopy opening for new regeneration. Eh? Why do you do create gap? Because we can we're going to get more sunlight. Eh? Okay, so we cut out this uh c2 eh this c2 we take out to get more sunlight for the new or uh, we can say the, the ceiling here eh? okay okay then we go another treatment eh after we do the seeding failing we have we do the cleaning what is the cleaning eh cleaning and girdling cleaning is cutting of some or the uh underneath eh, cleaning the underneath area from competitor eh? what is the our competitor it's like 
lianas, palm, ginger, white banana. So we cut all of this vegetation eh, to reduce the competition. And also we do the poison girdling. Poison girdling mostly we have done to the woody tree. Eh, to the woody tree. Okay. Then another treatment. Okay. Compare with the commercial regional felling, we compare with regeneration improvement felling. So the first regeneration improvement felling, we have CG1. Eh? CG is cleaning and also girdling also. Eh? CG, eh? C is for cleaning, G for girdling. Okay? So we have this. Eh? So under regeneration improvement felling, we have uh, CG1. Eh? Okay, so for the CG1, Poison girdling of class 2 3 is this unsuitable tree for timber and also tree from lower canopy layer. And now the uh, treatment is the cleaning, cleaning all the climber, palmer, and also other ginger, everything. Okay. So we do this. Eh? Girdling is replacing the failing. Right now, we didn't do girdling because girdling sometimes they use a uh, poison, eh? dangerous to the wildlife. Okay, why girdling is still failing? Okay, see, this is a ceiling failing. Okay, this is what happened if you cut uh, the, down the ceiling, so more sunlight. Eh? Compared with the poison girdling, uh, this, the tree is standing there, rotten slowly, and then give shape for, for meantime. Not com uh, compared with the ceiling failing, you cut this, uh, the tree and instantly direct sunlight. Uh, some of the species are cannot tolerate with the direct sunlight, but using the poison girdling, you can reduce the, the intensity of the sunlight eh, to penetrate slowly, and eh, maybe it take one year to get all the seedlings, uh, all these three die. Eh. Then we have a new uh, regeneration over there. Okay, then we go to Another RF2, that means in regeneration improvement failing, we have two cutting, uh, two cleaning and also two uh, girdling. RF, RIF1, and then they go to RIF2. Eh? So within one and two, it takes time sometimes one year or two years. Eh? And then we have intermediate cleaning if necessary. Uh, if for, for example, if you have done uh, first and second cleaning, but your forest still got lots of uh, shrub over there, you can do another intermediate cleaning. So it's costly actually. Eh? And then we go to the final failing. Final failing, mark the final failing of class one tree. Same also for the RRF. Okay, so the final failing, you mark all the tree. Okay, mark all the class one tree. If adequate regeneration or tree to be harvested will be tagged. Okay, take and then you cut down. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so after finish this final failing, and then we go for the failing. Eh? So after failing, it state maybe uh, the treatment, eh? duration after failing to the first treatment, uh, around two years, eh? around two years, two, actually not three years, within two to five years, eh? two to five years. Eh? So in commercial regeneration failing, we have cleaning, the third cleaning, eh? the third cleaning, we have the third cleaning, the same thing that we have done uh, in one and two before failing. And then we have first thinning, eh? we have first thinning. Okay, sorry, it's happened many times.
Okay, then we have the first inning. Also, it's happened to regeneration, improvement, failing. Okay. Okay, so this is finished with the Malaysian Malayan regeneration improvement failing. So in uh, overview, the first system, this is the first systematic silviculture system that has been developed in uh, Malaysian uh, forest. Uh, that's back in 19, 20, 1922 until uh, 1911 until 1922. Eh? This is the first systematic silviculture system. It's quite intensive silviculture treatment. Uh, this treatment is to encourage the regeneration. I mean, you may, we're going to make sure the regeneration is better and better. Eh? And then this is, you can see this is the characteristic of shelter wood system. And the tree, uh, the, the big tree, are shelter the young tree or young uh, vegetation. And after for a while, then we come back to cut the shelter wood. Eh? So regeneration, advanced regeneration. And or new regeneration, that means there's no planting. Eh? So what is the objective of the uh, silviculture system? Sorry, come back. <laughs> okay, so we go to Malayan uniform system. Eh? So after finish the uh the mr mr uh, mrs so we have the malayan uniform system eh? so the this malayan uniform system uh, we start in 1945 and eh? we start in 1945 that means after the occupation of japanese uh we have uh, mrs uh, starting in 1911 until 1922 uh, we have MRS, uh, then from MRS, actually still under MRS, we have the improvement failing, eh, departmental improvement failing, commercial uh, regeneration failing, also regeneration failing. So now we go for Malayan uniform system. So the definition, eh, harvest of mature timber in one operation, okay, harvest mature timber, only mature timber, in one operation after adequate regeneration. That means you need to do some inventory first. Eh? You need to do the inventory. If not enough, so there will be no operation, no harvesting. Eh? Okay, according to what species that we have in that forest. Eh? And then follow by poison girdling. Poison girdling of none. RS species. As a species is uh, not valuable tree species, eh? not a re renewable, uh, valuable species. Okay, so this system can change a virgin forest with mid species into a forest which is mainly composed of commercial species. Why become only com uh, commercial species? Because we do the poison girdling of non RS species, eh? valuable species. So that means. At the end, after you apply MUS, you only get a forest with commercial species. Okay, is it okay or not? Later on, we can decide. Eh? So it's achieved by clear cutting and poison girdling. What is clear cutting? Because they harvest eh, only one operation with enough adequate uh, regeneration. So that means you need to do the study. Okay, so the keyword is here, one operation one time okay cut all the tree the big tree the mature tree and then make sure the adequate regeneration is look like one operation is look like the tree in the forest the big tree in the forest have been cut at one time so that mean it's look like a clear cutting but still have the regeneration that regeneration you need to uh, do the inventory first and then Control of species composition. How to control is using the poison girdling and also the climber cutting everything. Okay. So MUS involves failing all commercial species of a diameter of breast height of more than 45 centimeter. Either is retro cup or non retro cup is more than 45 centimeter cut down. Okay, they cut down all the three more than 45 centimeter in the BH. And this will be take about 
50 to 60 years cutting cycle. And each cutting is then followed by silviculture operation to eliminate all non-commercial species that we uh, said the non-valuable species. At that time, they said non-valuable species. Yeah? At that time, it's 1945 until 1970. Yeah? 1945 until 1970, the class uh, lots of species is not valuable, not valuable. But after that, all the species in the, our forest have, we can say, money there. Yeah? There's a money come from all the tree. Yeah? Okay, so each cutting is followed by silviculture operation to eliminate all non-commercial species of more than 15 centimeter diameter at breast height to reduce the competition. So that means you cut all the 45, more than 45, and then you do the silviculture treatment after that by eliminating non-commercial species, yeah, non-commercial uh, variable species, if more than 15 centimeter diameter to reduce the competition. To reduce competition, that means you just leave the commercial species. Non-commercial species cut down. Okay? So we have in uh, hill Drutrocop Forest, eh? uh, hill Drutrocop Forest with MUS. But the problem is MUS is applied on lowland area, okay? lowland deep trocar forest. Compare, we also have hill deep trocar forest. In our hill deep trocar forest, there is a low number of species and also individual because of hill deep trocar forest is very steep very steep, rocky also, and also the soil is not fertile compared with lowland deep trocar forest. Here deep trocar forest, unfertile, so that means less tree, and also the tree is not so big, uh, thin, we can say thin, and also it's very high competition. When they uh, have a high competition, not many, uh, we have many individuals, but not a big tree. Eh? And then, MUS, clear cutting. Many trees are harvested. Okay, and then MUS apply the girdling of three species. And then you can have uh, 50 to 60 cutting cycle. So if you apply this at hill deep trocar forest, MUS, if you apply this uh, at hill deep trocar forest, that means your hill deep trocar forest will be very poor after the first logging. So that means MUS is not suitable for hill deep trocar forest. They can only apply to lowland land to forest. So that means need to do something with MUS. We need to modify the MUS to suit with the hill deep to cut forest. Okay? okay, so what will happen? That's the, the what I explained to you. Okay, then <clears throat> clear cutting. Eh? Clear cutting, many tree are harvested. Gathering species long uh, cycling as uh, cutting cycle. So how to harvest fewer tree but maximum the return? This is the formula that we're going to do to modify the SMUS eh, to get harvest few tree but maximum the return. That means you need to do some selection. Eh, do do the uh, selection. Eh? So that's why we leave the MUS come out with a new system. We have selective management system. Eh? So this selection uh, definition eh, uh, first introduced in 1978. Eh? Like I said before, in 1978, we introduced the selective management system because of the hill detroca forest. We have experience with MUS. MUS have been applied uh, about 15 to 20 years at the lowland uh, for hill deep uh, lowland deep trocar forest, after fifteen years, uh, we don't have enough lowland forest. We go for hill deep trocar forest. So when we going to go to hill deep trocar forest, we found that in deep trocar forest not enough seedlings, not not enough a uh, big tree, eh, because of the amphata, the rocky, the steep everything. So that's why we need to modification our MUS, okay. First introduced in 1978, SMS was involved to meet the following requirement. One is the flexibility to manage the highly variable forest condition. Okay. 
manage the highly variable forest conditions. Okay. Second is the rationally based on inherent characteristic of the forest. What you have after your first harvest. If you cut all the matured tree, yeah, either is diptocarp or non diptocarp, you cut down all the 45 centimeter above, for example, what you get is going to be like one even age forest. But then you apply with the uh, girdling, you cut all these uh, non valuable for tree, so that means you're going to have the commercial. Uh, species is it but the problem is the commercial species mostly come from diptocarp species and we know that diptocarp species is not flowering is not fruiting every year sometime five years or sometime it's 10 years so we don't have enough seedling in future if you do like that okay so I then allow for the optimization of forest management through economic cut okay economic cut I mean you get a good tree only uh, high variable tree, sustainable sustainability of the forest. You need to sustain the forest, and you must make sure if you cut the tree, there must be enough uh, or adequate uh, seedlings for the next regeneration, yeah, to the next uh, cutting, yeah, and then minimum cost of forest development. What do you mean with cost of forest development? All this. Civic culture treatment take lots of cost. If you do many time of cleaning, do the girdling, everything, it take lots of cost. Eh? So we're going to reduce. No need to do cleaning many times. No need maybe to do the girdling. And eh? so we need to reduce all this cost by reduce the number uh, of uh, replication of the uh, civic culture treatment and also to modify what is the uh, species. Eh? For example, which species should we do the girdling? Not all the ceiling. We can, when we said before, uh, all the uh, non valuable tree, non valuable timber trees, we, you're going to cut down to, to, to do the uh, girdling. Eh? So, that is for uh, SMS, we didn't do that. Eh? Modification. Okay, failing regimes are based on inventory data. Yeah? So that means if you're going to do the failing, yeah? what you're going to do, what you're going to cut down, what is the size of the tree you're going to cut down, how, how much uh, tree are going to cut, how many percent, for example. So you need to do the inventory. Yeah? So for the uh, SMS, selective management system, mostly the important is the inventory before final uh, before the final failing we call it pre f eh? pre f inventory eh? pre f that means pre failing inventory so all this data is very important to make sure the the economic cut what trees to be cut how big eh? the sustainability of the forest minimum cost of uh, forest development cutting cycle if you use mus MUS because you cut the tree around 45 centimeter. Okay, so if you cut the tree at the uh, 45 centimeter and then you do the uh, cleaning and girdling, all species more than 15 to reduce uh, the competition 15 centimeter. The base, so that means uh, if you take the the ceiling um, after harvesting, you can say uh, 10 centimeter, for example, eh? 10 centimeter or more easy is 10 centimeter. Eh? You leave all the ceiling with 10 centimeter for the next cycle. If you want to cut yeah, the next cycle, if you want, you said you're going to cut uh, at the size of 50 centimeter in the BH. Right now you have 10 centimeter. So that means you need to have uh increment of 40 centimeter increment of 40 centimeter if one centimeter is take about one year so that means 40 centimeter you need to have at least 40 uh years eh, to wait for the next cycle so that's why mus is estimated uh, the next cycle after the first uh, harvest is 
55 to 70 years. It's take very long time, eh? 55 to 70 years. But compare with the SMS, yeah, just take 30 years. Why? Because SMS apply, the cutting limit is more higher. Only 55 centimeter uh, diameter, you can cut. Or 60 centimeter diameter of non-neutral cup, you can cut that tree. So that means you can get shorten, eh, shorten uh, cutting cycle. Eh. Advanced growth is bonus under MUS, but become the main crop under SMS. Yeah, okay. So that means in MUS, they apply the MUS, okay, and then MUS stop in uh, early 1970-something. Eh. MUS stop in 1970-something. It start 1948. So that means uh, the rotation that we use, we wait for MUS, eh, the second rotation, uh, not come yet, but we apply the MUS. So that means all the advanced growth under MUS is the main crop for the SMS. Therefore, if advanced growth is an under, inadequate under SMS, planting program will be undertaken. Uh, we call the enrichment planting. Eh? If not enough, the growth is not enough, so we do the uh, replanting and then that rotation will be lengthened that means take more years to go eh? if not enough if enough no problem eh? okay so this go to the concept the concept is sms is to protect the important of the drop cup eh? to protect the important of the drop cup then to shorten the rotation cheaper technique why cheaper technique because we reduce many uh, silviculture treatment, cleaning, girdling, uh, we reduce replication. Character of the pro-cut forest after harvesting, yeah, for example, the structure, the regeneration, growth and response to light, seem to be suitable with selective cutting. You select only, uh, for example, the pro cup, you put the diameter limit, eh, the diameter limit cutting of 55. Now the uh, 60, for example. So this is uh, the selective cutting. Okay. Small tree, 30 to 45 centimeter dBH, seem to grow to harvestable size within 30 years eh, compared to seedling. So that means the tree that we didn't cut below 45, uh, below 55. So that means all the tree within 30 to 45, that will be lots of tree. Eh. Small tree, 30 to 45 after the harvest, that group will be take another 30 years to be harvestable. So they will shorten, eh? uh, need to shorter rotation. So that is the way to get shorter rotation by having more small tree with diameter within 30 to 45 centimeter in the village. Many young tree, different size, eh, can be saved through directional fairly. In SMS, we have another improvement. We do the directional fairly. All the tree to be cut have been, uh, how to say, the, the loggers before they cut the tree, they know where the tree should go. Yes, because before, when they said cutting the tree, they just cut and then some drop on the trees or seedlings. And right now, under SMF, we do the directional felling. We estimate which uh, way the tree is going down, and then at that place, is there any uh, seedling? or any a small tree we try to avoid yeah so this is the directional failing and until now in malaysia we still improving this directional failing still improving why we need to improve because we have less valuable tree in the, our forest okay less valuable tree we have less diptocarp species we have more non diptocarp species now so we now going to have or to going to increase the uh, diptocarp species so we do this directional felling. We make sure when that tree is falling this way, there's no diptocarp species there. If we found there's a diptocarp species, we need to change that, the direction of the tree to be going down. Eh? Suitable for various silviculture regime uh, based off different uh, cutting limits, uh, silviculture regime. Eh? So if you want to do a uh, regime, we have various, eh, various regime. Okay, so the 
good of SMS. Eh? It's more to conservation. And we didn't cut all the tree. Uh, we still having the RSPCs. Eh? Last time we cut uh, RSPC, we didn't uh, take care. But for now, conservation. Eh? Sustainability, uh, optimum utilization, we cut, but we select the uh, species that we use uh, minimum damage, uh, especially from national felling. Small investment on rehabilitation, uh, enrichment planting. Eh? We do back enrichment planting. If you can uh, avoid damage the trees or damage the natural, or we can say we try to reduce our natural regeneration. So that means no need to us to do the planting. And so that means investment on rehabilitation we can reduce. Environmental stability, we also know that our forest, not only for timber, but we also for to get water from our forest, we get also fruit you know, for wildlife, everything. Eh? And small harvesting residual, yeah? small harvesting residual. Critical factors, growth and mortality rates must be within acceptable limit. So we need to go back to our, uh, what we call the, the, the size of the uh, trees. Eh? Okay, growth and mortality rate. Okay, the diameter, diameter growth mostly, uh, this is annual, eh? annual diameter growth, either from 0 0.75 until 1.05 centimeters, some of the species. Mostly we can say, Shoria, eh, Shoria species, you can have about 1.05 uh, centimeter eh, compared with uh, other uh, heavy hardwood Shoria, maybe 0 0.75 centimeter a year. And our gross volume increment commercial species is about 2.2 uh, uh, cubic meter per hectare and all species uh, just uh, 2.75 uh, meter cubic meter per hectare per year. And our gross uh, volume growth is about 2.1, all species is 1.9, and annual mortality is 0 0.9, annual in growth is 0 0.6. So we need to compare this growth and also the mortality rate. If by having this, we can estimate uh, our, is, uh, our forest is rich or poor forest. Eh? We can say that like this, when you do the inventory, eh, vegetation inventory before felling, uh, if you found the commercial species is around 2.2 uh, uh, meter per year, hectare per year, so we can say enough to be cut. Uh, less than that, maybe we need to lengthen the uh, cycle of uh, cutting. Yeah? So, Damage of residual sand. Uh, this is also, it depends on the directional felling, how the loggers take care of their uh, cutting. Eh? Okay, DBH, mostly uh, when you cut big tree, the big tree will be damaged, the smaller tree. Okay? If you have 60 diameter class, for example, uh, among them, the same size, maybe only 20%. Uh, damage. But if you cut one tree of 60%, uh, 60 centimeter in the uh, diameter, maybe they can affect damage about 50% of vegetation that range between 15 to 30 centimeter. Okay? If you cut bigger tree, you damage more smaller tree. Okay? So that means you need to do the directional felling, uh, do some maybe work before you cut down, you know the direction of your timber to going down, make sure that area don't have, or we can say less, eh, less uh, ceiling or sapling or trees eh, uh, to reduce the uh, damage, eh, to reduce the percentage of the, the damage. Educate stock. So you cut the tree, what you can have after that is very important. If not enough, uh, young seedling, the natural regeneration is not enough. So that means you need to do 
artificial planting. Eh? You need to do planting, uh, some enrichment planting, bring uh, some valuable tree, for example. If, uh, for example, eh, we have also, we have done it. Eh, after the first cutting, we found that deep drop cut only 10%. Yeah, only 10% left in our forest, 10%. What we do is we increase uh, then uh, the species of the procut to be planted uh, in enrichment planting there. Eh? So because of 10%, we all of the species that we use for uh, enrichment planting after the harvesting is only the procut species. We didn't use nab the procut. So we have done that. And so we have found that after 20 years, we found that uh, what we have done is, uh, according to our objective, eh, we are achieved that. Economic harvest for landowner and logger. Uh, so economic harvest. Eh? If you, after inventory, you found that before failing, the inventory before failing, you found in your uh, forest less valuable tree, for example. Eh? So valuable tree, that means you cut, maybe you are selling the tree, the timbers, with a less uh, income you can get. So it's not uh, uh, economic. So mostly that area or that forest, we leave it for another few years or maybe another 20 years eh, to get uh, the economic harvest. Eh. Okay, guideline for operation. Guideline, we, en uh, we enable the harvest of 30 to 40 meter, cubic meter eh, per hectare for two times within a period of 25 to 30 years. Eh. So the minimum uh, diameter cutting limit for the pro cup eh, is 50 centimeter. MDCL, minimum diameter cutting limit. Eh, diameter cutting limit. This is 50 centimeter for the pro cup. For num the pro cup, we reduce we reduce to uh, we reduce five centimeter. The pro cup is 50, num the pro cup will be 45. Eh? So right now, yeah, this is uh suggest in 1970 something eh, the procut is 50 but right now after the first uh, harvest by sms so before we go for the next uh, now our sms area i will do harvesting already eh? we have done twice already after the second harvesting we found that we need to increase the diameter or mdcl for the procut right now we put it 60 centimeter right now okay before is 50 right now for the second harvest we put is 60 centimeter because of not enough uh adequate the uh, next generation eh? so that means less five centimeter for them to talk up but for Chinga, new balloner couples new balloner couples is very slow growing we have lots of uh this Chinga in our forest so we increase the cutting limit until 60. But right now, Chengal are not, cannot harvest, eh? cannot be harvested in our forest right now. If you want to cut Chengal, if 100 centimeter, for example, in diameter, you need to get a special permit. You cannot cut down already because it's prohibited already. The government said no more cutting Chengal, except special request. Eh? Special request, if you cut, one chengal right now you need to do replanting of how many uh chengal? i think 150 ceiling of chengal you cut one you need to plant 150 chengal but you need to get also to put money to manage that tree for how many years uh, that's uh, the the new uh, the, uh, the new uh, policy we have done eh? the third is more than 32 commercial trees from 30 to 40 dbh class will be remain eh? we need that different between mdcl for the proca and number cup more or less about five centimeter percentage of the proca with dbh of more 30 centimeter in residual stand is must be more than original stand eh? and that percent of that the proca with 30 centimeter in residual stand it must be more if not enough, so that means you need to apply the enrichment planting of diptocut species. And not enough, you need to replant it. So MDCL will increase eh, 65 diameter 70 uh, in Chengah. That is in 
2004. 2004. The letters become more strict. Cengal, no more cutting. You want to cut Cengal, get a special permission. Uh, and then the permission give it to you. You cut one Cengal, you plant 150 Cengal, something like that. Eh? And also we're going to apply to other species, not only Cengal, but other species, mostly uh, species that on the hill deep cut forest. Eh? Okay, so selective management system. This is the operation of selective management system. One year or two years before the cutting, eh, the final felling, we do the pre-F inventory. So this pre-F inventory is to get the minimum diameter cutting limit. Eh, so they're going to get minimum diameter cutting limit before to do final felling. One year before felling, you do the uh, climber cutting, eh, cutting of liana and also timber tagging. Timber tagging, what we do in timber tagging is we take which tree going to cut down and which direction. So each tree we put the tagging, this tree can be cut and then there will be uh, arrow where should this tree fell uh, falling down. Okay? So that's the timber cutting. And then we do the felling. We, within two to five years after felling, okay, two to five years after felling, we do another inventory we call post F inventory. And then this post F inventory, mostly we're going to get uh, to know what we already have in our forest after the felling. So from that, we can uh, try to plan the civic culture treatment. Okay? Going to apply the civic culture treatment based on the post F inventory. Eh? Okay, we go to the uh, pre F inventory. Okay, so in pre F inventory, eh, pre F inventory, we know that uh, the cycle of the SMS, that forest must be not only one time harvested, but it will be harvest many times eh, by cycling because no regeneration sampling. Eh, regeneration sampling, is, there's no regeneration sampling. Control of quality, quantity and also quality. Quantity, number of species, percent, everything, quality also, not only uh, the pro cup, but also number of cup, how much the pro cup and also how much number of cup. Protection of residual stand uh, by directional failing and eh, control the residual stand because this residual stand will be the main tree to be harvested in the next uh, cycle. Eh? Bio deconservation, no more uh, poison deadly. Eh? We didn't do poison deadly because some of the poison we apply to the trees and eh, to the vegetation uh, have been killed many animals, eh, many wildlife. Eh? So that's why it's not suitable to use some uh, toxic uh, chemical in our forest. Yeah, we, we, know, we need to protect also the wildlife. Eh? Environmental protection uh, is mostly uh, the area, the forest, not only for timber, but forest also for other uh, environmental services. You have know that we need to use the forest for watershed management to get more, but the BioD also, uh, non-timber product also eh, from that uh, forest. So the new challenge, new data set of the group of the trocup and non the trocup after the inventory. Eh? So inventory is very important. We can get a uh, new set for the growth of the trocup and non the trocup. Why we uh, talk about the growth of the trocup and non the trocup? Because we do the, uh, the opening and then uh, the sunlight is penetration there. But this time we have a uh, cutting limit. Eh? The cutting limit we set quite high, eh? 55 eh? centimeter for the trocup and everything. So we have more, uh, the residual stand more bigger eh? compared with MMUS. Eh? Efficient use of all data set from pre-F inventory in decision making because of uh, the, when you do the pre-F inventory is very precise. Uh, the data collection is very precise and lots of data, not only the vegetation going to cut, but also what we have inside the weeds. Uh, what is the weeds inside our forest also? Been uh, 
uh, collect all the data eh. lack of the trocar for second and third cycle and this have been studied by uh, the forest department in 2010 and 2013 so we found that after the first harvest of uh, uh, in sms so before they go for the second cycle uh, some of the state in malaysia already have the third cycle for example in Terengganu, they have third cycle already uh, we found that we are lacking of the trocar in second and also the third cycle uh, the third cycle is more very poor eh, in terms of the trocar is very poor uh, that means after the third cycle using sms we need to plant all the trocar eh, replanting only using the trocar uh, for the second harvest the trocar for the second harvest are still using a uh, number trocar but percentage of the trocar if I'm not mistaken, some of the state eh, in Peninsula Malaysia for the second cut, they're planting about 70% uh, diprocap and 30% non diprocap. For the third cycle, mostly they do planting of 100% uh, diprocap. So other diprocap is by nature. Eh? Tree marking and felling, this is we need training. We need training. We train the forest the department officer so no problem with the forest department but the problem is the labor eh? the the people that do the cutting some of them we can say very low education eh? they just know how to handle the, the chainsaw but they don't know other things eh? so we need to train them yeah? to failing for example mostly they say or from their experience, experience but now they need to do according what the study have been done the research have been done uh, if you want to fail something for example you need to go uh, to the place there which the tree is going to fail you need to study what is the species inside so we need to train eh, the logger the people that uh, the that handle the chainsaw eh, they need to check you want to fail this way so make sure there's no diplocat species there uh, so this is uh a little bit tough for us eh, to train all the loggers. Eh? Okay, special uh, diameter cutting limit for Meranti Bukit. Uh, Meranti Bukit is on the uh, on the hill, eh, Meranti Bukit. Uh, Seraya also in the uh, on the hill. Uh, so these three species, Platyclados, Scotisa, and also Dry Balanus Aromatica, this is occur on hilly area. So for the hilly area, we have a special uh, diameter cutting limit. Eh? Procurement of instant tree in, in SMS harvesting area, especially on Jalan Tuju and Jalan Penari. Jalan Tuju is uh, not the main road, the tertiary road eh, in the logging system. Okay, so things to ponder the relationship between post F inventory and also treatment. We know that after we have done the, the cutting, we do the post F inventory. So from the post F inventory, we can understand what we have in our forest so we can plan what is the treatment to be there. Is it beneficial to calculate the minimum diameter cutting limit? Yes, of course, it's very important eh, to make sure. What, right now, we have got the problem less percent of the procap after second and the third harvest. So we need to do more planning uh, about the MDCL and also what we're going to do is species to be planted. What kind of species? Yeah, the procap. So the procap we have, we know that the procap have fast growing and also slow growing. So if you want fast growing there, so you plant, for example, Shora leprosula, eh, you can get a uh, cutting limit maybe 55, eh, 55 within shorter period compared with heavy hardwood maybe grow with 0.75 centimeter a year maybe stay more than how many 30 40 years maybe yeah? so which one you going to use eh? benefit of timber tagging uh, you take the timbers okay very important criteria for failing direction okay? criteria for failing direction need to improve again okay? benefit of sms to other usage okay? 
fulfilling the objective of subculture system SMS is it a selection system or a selective planning? Uh, there's a different. Uh, uh, some of them they said SMS is more to the selection system. Some of them said selective planning. Selective planning uh, they plus their selection system with directional planning. The selection system alone is different. Eh? The selection system alone, they just select the species, not include the directional failing. But selective failing include selection with directional failing. Okay, so this is uh, some of the book eh, we have in Malaysia. We use uh, this manual kerja luar sistem pengurusan memilih. Eh? So now they have four volume already. Uh, this is Manu um, Putanan, they said one, two, three. Actually, they, we already have four. Eh? We have already four. So, this is the way if you do the SMS, uh, this is the cycle. Eh? After 30 years, you can cut back. Eh? So, the first continuous cycle, the first cut, over mature and properly T3, up to 30% of the total, are marked and then cut. After 20 to 30 years, the remaining three have three, and the net regeneration is well established. And the second, once again, 30% 30 of the thirty percent of the mature tree are cut, focusing on the removal of poor quality. Another 30 years, they're ready for third, uh, cut with removal of another 30%. So in reality, we got problem with the percentage of dipro cut. After the first, second, third, the percentage of dipro cut are reducing. Okay? Because we know that uh, dipro cut is not flowering every year, every 10 years or 20, uh, 10, 5, 5, 5 to 10 years. Eh? They are flowering. If the cutting uh, cycle is 20 to 30 years, so some of the three, only one time only uh, fruiting. Okay. So not enough. So that's why we said we need to do something to increase the deep up in the forest. So pre air failing inventory, general picture of the forest condition. Uh, we get uh, to get the MDCL. We understand what is the residual stand regeneration climbers. Eh? Okay. So this is the way to uh, determine again, eh? repeated, eh? Uh, to get the MDCL, eh? the objective, the economic harvest, the stock after harvesting. Uh, you need to have more 32 trees. Eh? 32 trees is referred to the tree 30 to 45 centimeter in the diameter. Eh? Percentage of the procarp in residual stand must be more actually, but we cannot get. Next harvest, uh, around 25 to 30 or 30 to 40. Eh? Some of the area in the state eh, are very fertile, so they can get 25 to 30. Okay. <clears throat> Again, the MDCL, the procarp and the procarp just uh, around five uh, centimeter different the different one and two less uh, five centimeter threshold covers is minimum is 40 to 50 meter this is a guideline eh? 40 to 50. Uh, i have a study in one forest after the second cycle eh? second cycle of uh, sms i found that the poor is less than 20 meter, cubic meter. This is the most poor, eh? less than 20 uh, cubic meter per hectare. But some of the richer, I say it's more, uh, more than 60 meter, eh? 60 meter. Uh, I try to get uh, a forest that after the first harvest, the second harvest, eh? to get more than 85, but I didn't find maybe some of the under the forest department, maybe they know which forest they do the study. They found until 85. Eh? That's according to Dahlan and Azmi is the director of the uh, for the forest department. Okay, so again, repeat. Okay, timber tagging and directional uh, failing. All three above the prescribed cutting limit are marked for failing to control and track the movement and removal of log from the forest. Tree tagging not only to show which area to go, uh, the, the tree going to fail, but
but tree tagging also is to track uh, one tree, for example, uh, the merchantable log. Eh? Uh, one tree, for example, the height is, we can say, around 40, eh? 40 meter. The merchantable log, how many? One, one log merchantable, maybe 10 uh, meter, for example. So one tree, maybe they can produce uh, one, two, or three. Eh? One, two, or three uh, log. So this is very important to track the movement. By tracking the, the movement of the log from the forest, this is, to call, this is the way to control the illegal logging. Eh? And all of this uh, timber tagging, they put the serial number of the tree and number of the merchantable log. Eh? Are the staff capable of taking the right direction? This is the problem. Eh? This is the problem, contractor. Sometimes the contractor, because of not, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody supervise them in the forest, they just, we already put the direction of the tree to be felled, but the contractor doesn't follow sometimes. Eh? For them, easy for them to do, uh, to make it faster, eh? not, not to get the good quality of the timber, because they sometimes they just cut because they are looking for to get more volume, eh? because they pay by volume. Eh? So this is a tree tagging, so one tree tagging, I think it's almost the same in Indonesia also, eh? to track the number of logs. Okay. So this is the coding uh, on the top is nama ringkas jabatan, uh, nombor nombor pokok, nombor tual, eh, nombor pokok everything. So nombor pokok when you put nombor pokok at the tree tagging on the tree, but in your data nombor pokok also going to have what kind of species? Eh, nombor pokok only on the tree, but in the book. In your data, number of also have their full uh, name. Eh? So this is directional failing. You can see where is the failing to go. Eh? Okay. So this one, for example, which is going to go? Did they either go this way? Go this way. Eh? Okay. So this is a uh, cutting of lioness. Eh? Lioness is a uh, climber. Eh? It's very important to uh, cut the lioness one year or two years before we do the final felling. Eh? Because one is to the safety of the loggers, and second is to control the quantity and also the quality of harvested log. Because some of the tree, when they have uh, climbers on the top of their crown, for example, if the climber is not die yet, when you cut the tree, that tree may be we have already the direction to going down, but maybe it's not followed because of the, the they stay attached with the climbers. Eh? So some of the tree snap, uh, make the quality uh, become lower. Eh? Second is uh, the reduction of biodiversity, eh? loss of potential using. Eh? So what shall you do? Still, we need to do the uh, climber cutting. Eh? And climber cutting because of the safety of the loggers. Mostly in Malaysia, if the climbers, uh, some of the loggers, if they found they still, uh, the climber is still alive there, hanging on the tree, they didn't cut. Okay, they didn't cut, they didn't tell to our officer. So what our officer will be, uh, maybe they go back, okay? Our officer will go back to the forest, maybe after finish all the, uh, the the harvesting, maybe within two years eh, after harvesting, and then they found big tree still there because of not being locked because of the uh, there, there's a climber. So there will be a penalty to the loggers. Eh? They need to pay to the government. Post inventory, future harvest, more tree with 30 centimeters in interval of DBH, neutral cut and non bridge cut must be. Uh, we try to get eh, neutral cup, we cannot get more than non neutral cup. Uh, mostly, if we can get 30% of neutral cup, we are very lucky already. If less than that, we need to do the planting, eh, the additional planting. Eh. So, this is EP is additional planting. Eh. The regeneration mostly depend on the ceiling and sapling, and also species. Species is referred to deep or non deep 
Yang cutting, still need to do uh, and also cleaning. Cleaning is very important because we have lots of weeds in our forest. We have bertam. Eh? Bertam is stemless uh, palm. Stemless palm. Uh, this, the problem with this, this stemless palm, if the tree is already what's called the fruiting over there, the fruit is dropped, it's not reached to the, the forest floor, it's not germinate because of the bertam over there. Bertam. This is a problem. Eh? Bertam, bamboo. This is the weed. We call weeds. Eh? Bamboo also weeds in our forest. Rasam is fern. Yeah, fern is a fern. Ginger, we have musa. Musa is a pisang. Eh? Wild badana. Eh? Data on big tree, diameter, number of log, quality of uh, first log. Eh? The important is first log. Eh? Okay. First status. Okay. Crown. So this is the minimum residual stocking. Uh, if more like this exploitable, it's more uh, 45. So in growth, eh? so this is number. This is minimum. If you have, this is the minimum number. So that means enough stocking. If not enough, do the planting. Eh? The next is do the planting if the tree is not enough. The number of the small tree, for example, 90 seeds, not, cannot get 90 seeds eh? for the small tree. For example, 30 only, for example, so you need to do replanting. Okay. Objective will be to be met by agriculture system. Okay, again, uh, is to in line with the, the what called the, in line with the, the need of the land, objective of the land owner, eh? provision, the regeneration, efficient use of growing space and site productivity. Less competition, eh? Need to do the less competition control, damaging agents, eh? damaging agent including the uh, the one that I, I told you, uh, the damaging is the, the weeds, eh? Sustainability of the forest, optimum use of growing stock. Okay, I think that's all for me for today. Uh, maybe some of you are going to have some question. I open to the floor. Okay, thank you, for Azani. Uh, before to discuss, uh, I will say for you, uh, maybe Indonesia have to uh, silviculture system uh, to uh, some like a selective filling and replanting system. The bank filling tanam Indonesia yeah. and another system, strip cutting and replanting system and tilling and line painting system atau tebang pilih tanam jalur Indonesia. Okay, uh, I think from this your uh, explain this is maybe another same with uh, silviculture system in Indonesia, but maybe is uh, my my student can be uh, found it uh, what different uh, silviculture system in Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, adik-adik sekalian mungkin tadi sudah apa, kalian dengarkan materi dari Pak Azani sebenarnya sistem silvikultur yang ada di Malaysia itu kurang lebih hampir mirip cuman mungkin ada beberapa yang beda nah di sini harapan saya atau three in one program ini uh, memang untuk menambah pengetahuan adik-adik sekalian untuk mengetahui sistem silvikultur di negara lain terutama di Malaysia sebagai negara tetangga kita yang uh, maybe uh, same with the Uh, di Tero Karpase, Pak Azani. Jadi uh, memang uh, yang di Indonesia ini uh, hampir sama dengan Malaysia, uh, banyak dikembangkan itu uh, khususnya di Tero Karpase. Sorea, Driobala, Nops, uh, apa lagi? Di Tero Karpase. Jadi ada beberapa itu, mungkin ada di sekalian uh, sudah melihat dan sudah membaca uh, apa namanya sistem silvikultur yang ada di Indonesia. Dan tadi uh, dijelaskan oleh Pak Azadi terkait dengan sistem silvikultur yang ada di Malaysia sampai perkembangannya sampai uh, selective management uh, system tadi. Jadi mudah-mudahan Adi bisa mendapatkan manfaatnya. Ternyata kita itu tidak hanya sekedar tebang menebang dan seterusnya. Ada beberapa tahapan. Tadi ada juga mungkin uh, uh, needed, needed training misalkan ya untuk menandai dan uh, menebang itu juga perlu training. Jadi Harapan saya ada adik bisa mungkin diskusi dengan Prof. Azani. Uh, bilingual nggak apa-apa ya, Pak? 
Boleh. Boleh. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Jadi kalau ada yang mau pakai bahasa Inggris juga nggak apa-apa. Ini apa? Jadi ajang untuk belajar bagi saya juga dan mungkin bagi adik-adik sekalian ke praktis. Oke. Okay. Saya persilakan kepada adik-adik untuk uh, bertanya kepada Pak Anjani. Siapa yang akan bertanya? Silakan. Silakan. Hafi, Jainuddin, Yubinda, ataupun yang lain, silakan. Bahasa Indonesia saja, nggak apa-apa. Untuk pengetahuan juga lah. Mungkin saya okay. lupa bagi tahu. Apa yang saya bentangkan tadi itu adalah lebih kepada lowland dan juga hill deep trocar forest. Ya. Okay. Ya, kalau untuk mangrove dan juga peat swamp itu lain. Itu ada sistem CBKC yang berbeza yang kita akan bertanggungjawab. Oke, oke. Oke, silakan Afi. Langsung saja Afi, nyalakan dulu mic-nya. Bisa? Sudah. Silakan Abi. Uh, okay, Mr. Azin. Maybe uh, I'm interested with shelter root system. Okay, one of the silviculture system applied in Malaysia is the shelter root system. Okay, right. And we know that the shelter root system is aimed at regeneration or natural regeneration. Is it uh, in this system that natural seeds are left to grow? Or is there some selection? Because not all the seeds produced by the mother plants or mother tree are good, Mr. Anzani. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Ada lagi soalan atau saya boleh jawab dahulu? Dijawab dulu, nggak apa-apa, Pak. Jawab dulu, ya. Okay. Saya jawab dalam bahasa, ya. Okay. Kalau shelter wood system ini, kalau di dalam natural forest, dia berbeza dengan shelter wood system di forest plantation. Okay. Okay. Uh, saya ambil yang shelter wood uh, system di dalam natural forest, yeah, in our natural forest. Di dalam our natural forest system, yang mana uh, hutan tropika kita ini terdiri daripada pelbagai species. Dan shelter wood system yang di Malaysia digunakan pakai ataupun ditumpukan kepada diptrocup species. Oh. Ya, yeah, kami tumpukan kepada diptrocup species. Berbeza dengan non diptrocup species yang mana non diptrocup species mereka lebih mudah survive. Ya, yeah, capable to grow under uh, extreme sunlight for example. Eh, yeah, compare mm -hmm. with uh, diptrocup species, they need shade. Ya, yeah, after they germinate, they need shade, yeah. So mostly Where the seeds or where the seedlings are come from is mostly from the mother tree. That mother tree is a shelter tree for the 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 young seedling. Yeah. So, dalam forest, dalam perhutanan di di Malaysia, kalau in natural, apabila dikenal pasti uh, mother tree, mother tree di perokap spesies, so kami akan pastikan dalam beberapa tahun pokok tersebut berbuah, berbunga dan berbuah. Apabila dia berbunga dan berbuah, di situlah kami akan bagi tumpuan untuk memastikan regeneration ini mencukupi untuk sunlight. Kita juga akan reduce the competition. Ya, yeah, reduce the competition. Cuma ada perubahan sedikit yang mana kami tidak lagi tebang ataupun harvest mother tree itu. Okay, kami sudah tidak tebang mother tree, tapi apa yang kami buat, kami pindahkan that young seedling, hmm. masukkan dalam polybag dan ditanam di tempat lain. So we hmm. remain that shelter wood. Before the shelter wood is going to be harvest, eh? the previous system in the, in MUS, eh? they applied to to cut the shelter wood. Nah, tapi kita dah ubah. Sebab kita tahu bahawa that shelter wood is already uh, how to say adapt to that area because of their adaptation to the area area they capable to fruiting they capable to flowering so that mean it suit already with the condition environment over there so we are we said 
why we cut down that tree? Because of that tree already suit with that area, better we leave it there and then just make sure they are producing the offspring. Eh, ada saja uh, apa biji kita akan semaikan di nursery. Kalau ada yang dah germinate di lantai hutan on the forest floor, bring back the seedlings to the nursery and then by that we can do the planting at the different area. That is the shelter wood under the natural forest. Compared to the shelter wood system under the forest plantation in Malaysia, for example, we have previously before we have acacia manjum. Okay, acacia manjum plantation in Peninsular Malaysia is a little bit different with plantation uh, of acacia manjum in Pen, uh, in Sabah and Sarawak. Okay? In Peninsular Malaysia, we got problem with the the pest, uh, the disease. Eh? Within less than ten years. Our acacia uh, manjum got problem with the disease, so we need to cut our acacia before 10 years. Mostly at seven years old, we cut already eh, in Peninsula Malaysia. Compared to the acacia manjum in Sarawak and also in, in uh, Sabah, they can go until 15 years. Okay? They can go until 15 years. Some of the acacia manjum, eh, uh, be choose as a mother tree or going to put under the shelterwood system. So in Sabah and Sarawak. So they can start apply the shelterwood system at the age of 10 years of acacia manger. Okay? So that acacia manger bear the fruit and then the fruit germinate and everything under the tree. So what we do is we still select the best among them, uh, among the young seedling, which one is the best? in terms of form, in terms of growth, everything. So then we do the thinning. Eh? We do the thinning to reduce the competition and then we make the distance between uh, the, the natural, the ceiling. Eh? I have done a study in Peninsula Malaysia for the tree of acacia eh? below than 10 years old eh? to compare the result of the ceiling 10 years old in Sabah and Sarawak. In the result in terms of the germination and also the quality of the seedling. Eh? If acacia manjum start fruiting at the age of seven years old, for example, to compare with the, the quality of the seedling produced from 10 years old acacia in Sabah and Sarawak. In Sabah Sarawak is much better in terms of quality, it's much better the growth is more better, uh, fast growing, compared with the seven years old mother tree in Peninsula. It's slow growing and also tendency to get uh, problem with, with disease. Eh? So that's why the shelter wood system in Peninsula Malaysia for plantation is not so good compared with in, in Sabah or Sarawak. Okay, Avi, did I answer your question? Uh, okay, Mr. Arjun. So, uh, we keep uh, the mother tree and only take seeds for seed search, right, Mr. Arjun? Yes, yeah. We take it and then we make sure we give the treatment to the mother tree. Eh? Uh, now we didn't cut that mother tree, we give the treatment. The treatment in terms of take care in terms of the pest and disease, eh? especially the pest and disease. We didn't do any fertilizing the, the mother tree. Eh? We didn't do fertilizing the mother tree. Oke, okay, okay. mungkin Avi juga bisa memahami bahwa dipterokar pasti kan termasuk pohon yang semi toleran. Jadi dia membutuhkan perlindungan shape before the grow up. Iya. Yeah. Mungkin itu Avi. Ya yeah. uh, penjelasannya kenapa uh, perlu dilindungi tadi itu karena dia termasuk yang semi toleran. Tapi kalau sudah tinggi dia akan uh, butuh cahaya yang cukup. Begitu Pak Azan nih. Ya. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ada lagi yang any question uh, for for uh, Pak Azan nih about the silti culture system in Malaysia. Ada? Jangan malu-malu. Jangan malu-malu. Jangan malu-malu. Mungkin satu hari nanti saya boleh kongsi Okay. 
dan Malaysian civil culture system untuk peat swamp forest dan juga mangrove forest. Okay. Mungkin ada persamaan juga di yang di apply di Indonesia. Okay. Ya. Atau mungkin nanti mahasiswa kita bisa ke sana pak? Bio oh, boleh, nah problem, silakan. Eh, Insya Allah bila sudah wabak ini, eh, pandemi ah. ini sudah reda, Insya Allah ah. boleh. Okay. Eh. Forest eh forest camp, what the program? Forest camp. Yeah. Forest Camp uh, buat sementara ini uh, hmm. yang the latest kami buat secara virtual saja. Oh virtual. Ah uh, virtual. Kami okay. harap pada 2022 nah, nanti eh, bolehlah kita datang ya yeah, dan okay. bersemuka di sini. Okey. Kami punya planning insya-Allah pada uh, pertengahan Disember hmm. uh, pelajar akan pulang ke kampus. Oh okey okey okey. Ya. Yeah. Ya, nanti ya disiapkan nih untuk forest camp program dari UPM maybe to uh, next next year. Ada okay, beberapa yang boleh kongsi ya. Uh, okay. Saya pernah bawa pelajar saya mm-hmm. satu kelas ke Bogor. Okey. Selama uh, 10 hari untuk kelas uh, beberapa lah kelas uh, civic culture uh, dan juga social forestry. Mungkin boleh juga daripada dari sana ya. Dan ada Universiti Brawijaya untuk datang ke Malaysia, ke UPM. Bukan hanya untuk forest camp, tapi mungkin untuk mengadakan uh, apa yang kita sebutkan amali. Student exchange. Oh. exchange ataupun amali. Amali pertama, ya. Macam saya pernah uh, lakukan bersama dengan IPB di Bogor. Hmm. Uh, semata-mata untuk amali. Amali di, di tempat semayan, di nursery. Dan okay. juga amali di uh, civic culture treatment dalam hutan di sana. Okey. Ya. Yeah. Ada yang berminat ini? Untuk ya, saya pun berminat. Boleh. Okay. Sebab Nanti. sebenarnya banyak kemudahan yang pelajar boleh dapat apabila okay. mengadakan program ECIN. UPM hmm. dengan Brawijaya kan sudah ada MOU. Yes. Ya, yeah, jadi lebih mudah mungkin untuk bawa accommodation kan accommodation Uh, sebenarnya saya boleh cuba di bagi apa excuse untuk accommodation. Uh, Okey. Sebenarnya boleh kita saya pernah menerima pelajar daripada Indonesia juga selama 10 hari di di kampus UPM penginapannya di hostel percuma gratis. Oh, gratis ya percuma itu gratis ya pak ya. Percuma itu gratis. <laughs> Okey. Okey, uh, ada lagi yang uh, ada soalan ada, lagi? Okey, untuk sistem civic culture nanti di hari Kamis mungkin kita akan ketemu lagi ya Pak ya? Ya, yeah, yeah. yeah. nanti saya akan sharekan uh, slide saya nanti. Okey. Ya, yeah, saya nanti akan uh, ke, uh, hantarkan by email nanti. Okey, okay, Pak. Okey, ada lagi yang mau ditanyakan any question from the, my student? Okey, Jainuddin, silakan. Saya itu dulu ya. Ya okay. baik. Uh, apakah suara saya sudah terdengar Pak? Sudah sudah. Ya selamat pagi Prof Azani. Uh, selamat pagi. Uh, yang saya ingin tanyakan tadi kan uh, Prof Azani sudah menyampaikan terkait dengan uh, modifikasi dari uh, model SMS. Nah yang uh, menjadi pertanyaan saya uh, seperti apakah dan juga uh, apa saja yang menjadi modifikasi dari adanya alat uh, yang disebut SMS di Malaysia itu Pak. Terus kemudian uh, yang paling mela- um, apa ya, membedakan gitu, yang paling dominan sekali, yang membedakan antara uh, silpical, uh, silpiculture di Indonesia dan juga Malaysia itu, menurut Bapak apa saja Pak? Seperti itu. Terima kasih. Oke. Okay. Saya juga terima kasih ya Zainuddin ya Zainuddin. Ya Zainuddin. Saya bukan yang begitu arif berkaitan dengan silpiculture di Indonesia. Tapi saya nampak banyak persamaan. Hmm. Ya, banyak persamaan. Kenapa banyak persamaan? Kerana Malaysia dan Indonesia adalah tropical forest. Dan kita pun ada lowland dan juga hill deep tropical forest. Eh, lowland dan juga hill uh, uh, forest. So uh, dan di Indonesia pun bukannya baru dalam apa sibikacil treatment ini. Itu pun Uh, awal 1900 juga eh 1900 eh so pengalaman antara Malaysia dengan Indonesia tidak jauh beza 
ya yeah, tidak jauh beza. Uh, kalau kita tengok macam guru-guru saya ya, eh, saya punya profesor pun datang daripada Indonesia juga. Eh, sebenarnya apa yang kita belajar Indonesia dengan Malaysia, kita datang daripada satu guru yang sama. Ya. Yeah. Uh, kebanyakannya kita refer kepada uh, British. Ya, yeah, British ya, yeah. British yang banyak di Malaysia dia menggunakan hutan sejak awal 1900. Jadi apa yang diimplementkan di Malaysia hampir sama dengan Indonesia disebabkan oleh tropical forest lah. Ha, hutan yang sama tu. Saya nampak uh, macam di Indonesia ada tebang pilih tanam pilih. Itu adalah dah termasuk dalam SMS. Ya, yeah. dalam SMS kami kenali dia sebagai enrichment planting, ya, yeah. enrichment planting. Enrichment planting dia akan apply after kita buat uh, apa tu selective cutting tebang pilih. Okay, selepas kita buat tebang pilih, kalau tak cukup anak kita akan tanam. Apa yang ditanam itu kita akan buat pilihan. Apakah uh, spesies yang sesuai untuk kita tanam? Ya, yeah, sama aja uh, Zainuddin. Uh, dan untuk pengetahuan semua juga. Uh, oleh kerana persamaan yang hampir ya boleh katakan semua hampir pengurusan hutan di Indonesia dengan di Malaysia sama ramai pelajar yang saya terima daripada Indonesia yang buat master dengan PhD dengan saya bila mereka datang ke Malaysia dia cakap wih ini sama saja pak dengan Indonesia kalau civic culture system jadi mudah bagi mereka untuk menyiapkan master dan juga PhD ini ada peluang lah siapa yang di sana ya Brawijaya nanti kalau mau buat master PhD ke sila datang ke Malaysia on CV kaca hampir sama anda eh saya tidak risau kalau uh, saya nak jadi supervisor yang kepada yang berminat on CV kaca so, eh, kalau dengan Indonesia Malaysia hampir sama tapi kalau Indonesia eh, Malaysia dengan dengan Thailand ada sedikit perubahan ya yeah, sebab mereka ialah dry deep tokap forest. Nah, dia ada dry deep tokap forest, dia punya di southern part of Thailand. Nah, kalau di Malaysia dan Indonesia kan kita sama eh di bawah garisan katulistiwa. Jadi hutan yang sama, sistem yang apa sistem sibir kaca pun sama cuma nama saja berbeza. Sistemnya sama. And, and one uh, question about the modif modify SMS, Pak. Apa modifikasi SMS? Okey. SMS ni modifikasi dia adalah daripada MUS ya. Kalau MUS dia semasa di apa implementkan MUS selepas perang 1948 ya. Semasa di dalam MUS semua pokok yang matang. Ya. Kalau semasa tahun 40-an Apabila disebut matang, matured tree is refer to tree that 45 cm above in term of diameter. Okay, so that mean any tree that have 45 cm in diameter, either is deep to cut or non deep to cut, they said is already matured and then they can cut down. So when they cut down, that means root like clear cutting. So modification in SMS we sell it okay we didn't do not apply 45 but we do the minimum diameter cutting limit so this mdcl is come from our inventory okay so in mus they don't have inventory before cutting and also after cutting the inventory they have done is only just to know what is the weight what is the climber for example like that only but for sms The inventory before uh, before the felling is to know what we have in our forest, what is the size of the tree in our forest. So by having knowing the number of species, the size of the tree, so we can set what is our minimum diameter cutting limit. Okay, so we increase in MUS only 45, but in M uh, SMS we increase with minimum into 55. Okay, so that means all of the tree for 55 above 
you can get cut down. Okay, below that, okay, for example, 40, for example, or 45, you will put it under residual stand. That means we're going to cut the next generation, the next re recycle. Okay, so the MUS, SMS, a little bit different in terms of cutting limit. Okay, by having different cutting limit, MUS need because they cut small lot, lots of small lot they cut down. So that means you need to wait longer time to get second cutting limit. But in uh, uh, SMS, you increase the minimum cutting limit, you leave it more bigger tree. 45 you still have there, for example. So that means you can shorten the cutting limit. The SMS can go until 25 to 30 compared with uh, uh, MUS until 50 to 70 years old because we need to wait that small tree to become bigger tree in, in SMS, uh, MUS. Eh? So this is the different. Okay. Then Malayan regeneration system. Eh? Uh, Malayan regeneration system, MRIS, yeah, is come from, uh, is come before MUS. It's already give effect to the MUS. Okay, so the MUS got more young tree actually, yeah, because of the Malayan regeneration improvement failing. Because in Malayan regeneration failing, they cut, uh, they said not valuable tree, big tree, but not valuable, they cut down. So that means they leave more smaller tree. So that smaller tree in MRIS go or growing anti MUS. So in MUS, they have more smaller tree. So that's why they can wait longer. Eh? The third is about the civil culture treatment eh? in compare with the MUS and SMS. We can say that in MUS, there no planting. Then no more planting. They didn't apply any planting at all, MUS, because they depend on the natural regeneration. Compared to SMS, they plant if not enough regeneration, they plant, and they plant. Okay? So that means when they plant, they increase the number of diprocarp species. Okay? Any planting in SMS, concentration is more to get more uh diprocarp species eh? compared with mus they did the planting but they depend on the natural regeneration i think that's uh, the main difference that we need to know between sms and also uh, mus okay yeah okay. bye uh, Prof, terima kasih sudah memberikan wawasan baru untuk terkait dengan sistem agriculture dan juga modifikasi dari SMS tersebut. Yeah. Uh, terima Sama. kasih, Prof. Sama-sama. Oke, okay. mungkin ini Jainuddin di Indonesia juga sama perkembangannya juga sama seperti itu. Yeah. Dulunya uh, apa diameternya mungkin uh, dipertimbangkan jumlahnya dan seterusnya sampai akhirnya nanti uh, terjadi beberapa perubahan terkait dengan sil. Uh, silviculture system in Indonesia. Mungkin saya nuri nanti dan teman-teman yang lain uh, tugas sebenarnya sudah saya berikan untuk mencari sistem silviculture in Indonesia. Jadi mungkin bisa di compare nanti uh, dengan sistem silviculture in Malaysia. Secara umum memang sama karena selektif. Yang terakhir kan SMS selektif management system is same uh, in Indonesia selektif. Uh, sebelum kita menebang memang ada beberapa kegiatan seperti inventory data untuk menentukan pohon mana saja, uh, timber tagging dan nanti uh, hasilnya itu didiskusikan pohon yang mana akan ditebang dan akan ditinggalkan. Itu mungkin beberapa aktiviti atau kegiatan uh, yang dilakukan dalam silviculture uh, system uh, di Indonesia sebenarnya mungkin nanti adik-adik silakan uh, untuk membaca. Uh, berapa banyak sistem silviculture di Indonesia? Uh, ada lagi yang mau bertanya? Silakan. Silakan. Uh, atau sudah mau melamar uh, master student untuk dibimbing sama Pak Azan ini? Ya silakan. <laughs> Mungkin saya boleh share juga lah. Eh, saya uh, 
sekarang ni banyak buat on rehabilitation ataupun restoration project. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, saya ada beberapa kawasan ya hutan mm-hmm. di Malaysia lebih kurang ada 13 hutan di Malaysia yang memang sesuai untuk dijadikan apa kajian dalam master dan juga PhD. Okay. Yeah. So silakan kalau datang ke Malaysia mungkin tahun hadapan lagi bagus. Ya yeah, sebab tahun ini sudah akhir tahun. Jadi oh, yeah. tahun hadapan pertengahan tahun hadapan uh, intake master adalah Uh, September. No. September 2022. Jadi applicationnya mungkin dalam pertengahan April boleh, uh, Jun pun boleh ataupun uh, April dan Jun adalah application. Application. Yeah. Uh, application. Jadi entrennya adalah dalam bulan apa? September. Oh, Okey. Belum bisa pak, karena mereka masih semester 3 Ah. <laughs> nanti kita, nanti. Ya, kita pun okay. boleh buat satu exchange uh, program. Kan? Ya, yeah, exchange program. Ya. Yeah. Program. Mm-hmm. Jadi kalau exchange program tu boleh melawat ke tapak okay. kajian. Mm-hmm. Uh, di saya pun ada beberapa tapak kajian yang menarik juga untuk mungkin pelajar uh, degree, ya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, bukan setakat melihat, tapi boleh bersama-sama buat data collection. Okey, data collection ya. Yeah. Data collection. Jadi daripada data collection tu nanti mungkin di datang ke Malaysia selama satu minggu contohnya. Data collection mungkin ambil masa empat hari. Jadi mungkin bila pulang ke Indonesia masih lagi berurusan buat data analisis dan mm-hmm. akhirnya boleh produce apa tu mungkin paper ataupun hmm. uh, kalau di di sini kami ada thesis. Oh. Kan? Kami ada thesis. Jadi mungkin saya pernah juga menjadi co-supervisor untuk uh, pelajar daripada EPB Bogor. Hmm. Uh, eh, plotnya di Malaysia. Datang ambil data collection, buat data collection lebih kurang dalam 2 bulan. Kemudian hmm. tu semua data pulang ke Indonesia terus dianalisa dan menyiapkan tesis lah. Oh. Pun boleh juga. Ya. Yeah. Bisa bisa uh, tempat ini penelitian ya Pak ya. Ya, macam itu pun bagus juga. Kalau belum dapat peluang untuk master, hmm. tapi kalau untuk buat tesis level degree ataupun small project eh, kami panggil mini project. Hmm. Ya. Pelajar sebelum bergaduh perlu siapkan mini project. Kadang-kadang mini mini project for lecture ada pak mini projek untuk lecture untuk assignment ke <laughs> assignment <laughs> mungkin boleh kita usahakan juga hmm. ya ya okey okey saya uh, sejak apa pandemik 2020 kami tidak ada uh, pelajar daripada Indonesia hmm. sekarang ini mesti ada sentiasa ada paling kurang dua orang lah kan daripada dua orang hmm. ya, daripada beberapa universiti saya pun tak ingat lah sebab saya pun pernah mengajar juga mereka uh, orang CB Kaca lah kan dia orang hmm. datang ambil beberapa subjek dan saya mengajar dua subjek satu CB Kaca dan satu lagi ekologi okay. so, mereka akan ambil ekologi dan juga CB Kaca sebab CB Kaca dan ekologi ni dia ada ada persamaan sedikit hmm. amalinya CB Kaca dan uh, ekologi kadang-kadang di, boleh disamakan disatukan. Hmm, okey. Okey, adik-adik ada lagi yang mau ditanyakan atau cukup uh, penjelasan dari Pak Azani? Okey. Terima kasih Pak Azani. Thank you for today and I hope uh, Thursday we can uh, learn again with you with another experience about uh, Silvic culture. And today we learned about the silviculture uh, system in Malaysia. Dan tadi sudah ini ya, ada Zainuddin, ada Api, dan teman-teman yang lain sudah okay. uh, mendapatkan informasi. Ternyata sama, hampir sama. Uh, same lah with, with Indonesia, antara Malaysia dengan Indonesia. Terima kasih Pak Azani. Mungkin ada uh, closing statement, Pak Azani? Uh, nanti kita jumpa lagi pada hari Kamis nanti. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, terima kasih Pak Azani. Sama. 
uh, nanti mungkin pembahasan terkait dengan uh, rencana kuliah dan sebagainya mungkin di hari kami saja hari ini kita selesaikan dulu untuk materi uh, Silvical System in Malaysia terima kasih, terima kasih juga dari sekalian yang sudah ikut hari ini uh, jangan lupa absen ya karena ini bagian dari kuliah juga thank you Prof uh, Azani Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.